Welcome to part 2 in this series of tutorial videos for new members of the Goon Swarm Federation Alliance. This video will focus on getting you oriented to life in our space, uh, helping you reach our space from wherever you may currently be, and setting you up with the basic tools and uh, mechanisms we use to navigate safely in our space. The first thing you should do is to familiarize yourself with the Goon Swarm Federation rules. You will find these in the wiki at wiki.goonfleet.com slash rules. Life in GSF is fairly simple. Don't be an asshole and you'll be fine. Go and read through these rules in detail, but that's about what it boils down to. Goon Swarm Federation gives you a great deal of freedom in designing your own activities. There are very few things that are mandatory. As long as you are a productive and healthy member of the community, you are welcome to do pretty much what you want. Note that various member corporations may have their own additions to these rules. Some have restrictions on how you can conduct various scamming activities. Be sure to also familiarize yourself with your corporation-specific rules. Many alliance policies, rules and guidelines are also outlined in the forums, so be sure to familiarize yourself thoroughly with their content. For most topics relevant to life in Declan and in our alliance, you will find a dedicated thread in the forums that outlines how to do things and what restrictions may or may not apply. Goon Swamp Federation exhibits the highest level of cultured life in EVE Online. There are some cultural taboos that new members may accidentally commit. Search the wiki for cultural taboos and you will find a good listing of these. For example, Using puppy language like toons, desis, corpies, iskis will get you ridiculed at best and set to read only on the forums at worst. Likewise, do not do any retarded puppy salutes. Say hello, speak in sentences and words like a normal person. If you ever have doubt, just observe how other people communicate and organize your own communication in the same style. Now let's jump into the game and get everything set up as you should have it set up. Some of these things I'm going to show you are optional, some of these are fairly important. If you know what you're doing feel free to take them lightly, but if you are uncertain of how things work you should follow these instructions fairly exactly. The first thing you should do is to set up your user interface correctly. This account I am using to demo is set up completely as CCP intended. I have not customized it in any way, so it is quite suboptimal. When you are docked in station, you almost always want to be looking at the guests list. This will tell you who else is in the station. Perhaps there is some guy you have been chasing over some area and you want to know if he has docked up. This is how you can see it. The compact member list is always welcome. Let's just move it nicely into the corner as well. And I'm going to need the lower right corner, so I'm just going to make it a bit smaller. The next useful tool is the local chat. The chat text itself is completely irrelevant. Almost nobody uses local chat to say anything that actually matters. But what is valuable is the member list. You always want to have local chat visible on your screen because you want to know who else is in the same system as you. What I do is set it up somewhere like this. I minimize the text area, I don't care about what people are writing, and I make sure to set the member list as compact. Here you have a good overview of who else is in this system. Here in high sec it is fairly irrelevant, but once you get to null sec you definitely want to know if there are any hostiles in the system with you and how many friends you have. Now this does hide some data behind it, but I don't care about this data behind it. It's my region and constellation, who cares? Not relevant at all. And if you ever need to look at anything behind this local window, just hit tab and it minimizes. And hit tab again to get it back. Now as you see here, there is something called opportunities. This is a new feature CCP recently added to the game. It's basically like achievements in other games. If you are very new to EVE Online, you may have some benefit from this, but in general it's a waste of screen real estate and it also spams various notifications that you don't really care about. So you can open this opportunities map by clicking show all opportunities. And here click the settings icon and just check all these checkboxes and the opportunities will just completely disappear. You will 
never hear from them again. On the left you have a sidebar. By default there are a lot of things here. I generally optimize this to only have the things that I actually care about. So most of these you can just freely remove. You can always drag and drop more windows into this bar if you want to see it. But most of these are quite useless. Especially since you can usually use keyboard shortcuts to access these uh, windows far faster. So you should only have relevant things on the list. Right now I've completely cleared it. I will add new windows into the list when I actually use those windows. You just drag and drop from the main menu and that's how you make these new icons. Now at the bottom left I have various chat windows. They are blinking. Blinking is annoying. I'm just going to turn off the blinking. Rookie help is something that shows up for new accounts. It will go away on its own in 30 days. Meanwhile feel free to troll those people or do something harmless but fun with them if you would like. Corporation chat is rarely used, though it depends on what corporation you are a member of. If it's a very large corporation like Karma Fleet, then this chat can actually be active. But whatever the case, for all my chat windows, I try to have them very compact. So I will hide the member list. I will make sure to show text only. And this makes it very compact and nice. I can fit several lines of text in this small window. I don't need to keep it large and it's out of my way. You should probably do the same. And for all the other channels, repeat all the configuration. Make it small and compact. You would probably want to see the timestamp, just to make sure you're not speaking to someone from three hours ago. But that's about all you want to see besides the actual text. One thing you will soon notice is that we get a lot of notifications about sovereignty and services capture and all sorts of things. You will almost certainly want to configure your notification settings and disable these notifications that you do not care about. I completely don't care about most of these. I'm just going to start unchecking these boxes like crazy. Yeah, the only ones I really care about are the ones that say that someone I am watching in my watch list is online or offline. Everything else is completely irrelevant to me. So just configure this as you see fit, otherwise you'll just have endless spam in this uh, notification history and you will actually miss the important notifications if there are any that you care about. After having set up these basic UI settings, you will want to undock and set up your overview. This uses the default CCP provided layout, which is fairly bad in many ways. The selected item window, you can I tend to put to the side of my overview, something like this. It's not often used. The only good thing about it is that it has a warp button. So if you're in a hurry to warp out, you can select something and spam warp. This will get you very quickly out. Usually if you get your ship killed and you want to get your pod out right away, this is how you do it. Just select something and spam the warp button. Now the overview has various tabs. By default these are all terribly set up and completely useless. I will link an overview profile in the description of this video that you can download and make use of. There are various overview profiles available. If you look in the forums you will find other profiles which you may like more than mine. But just because I am familiar with it I will use mine for this tutorial. So let's go ahead and download this profile. This downloaded file goes into your documents folder and in here you need a folder called eve and in here you need a folder called overview and just stick that file in there. There you go and now you can load this file from inside eve. Click the settings icon on the overview window and open overview settings. At the top left you have import overview settings. This is the one you want to use. Select the profile you downloaded. Use the check all button and click import. You may need to open overview settings again to make sure that it correctly set all the overviews and brackets. You will want them as you see on my screen right now. Sometimes it doesn't import the brackets correctly and they are all set to default. But in this case it looks like the game did the right thing. You want to resize the overview and the various columns inside to make sort of sense. 
by default they're all kind of weirdly sized. Let's switch to the more stuff tab that shows more things. Here just adjust them according to the size of their content. Name and type are fairly important. Velocity is going to be a number, not very big. Alliance will be the ticker, also not very big. Something like this. This is good enough to start with. And make sure not to leave any empty space because screen real estate is important. Now how my overview pack works is very simple. Enemy ships tab. This is just for killing enemies. It doesn't show anything else. More stuff has everything you need to do more things. You can go ratting with it, you can travel around, you can also do PvP in it. Enemy ships are still visible here. Escape is for warping out. This just has places you can warp to. You quickly select one of these and spam warp and this way you can get out from a dangerous situation. Blue ships are anything that is friendly. I'll come back to what the term blue means later. And everything, as you can guess, is absolutely everything. Just a simple way to get everything in our overview in case in some situation you discover that it's not on one of the other overviews. For almost all situations I'll just use more stuff. It has all the important things on it and the unimportant things filtered out. Customizing the overview is a complicated process that I will not cover in this tutorial, but feel free to experiment later. One term that is relevant together with the overview is brackets. Now what are brackets? The overview's preset defines what you see in this overview window, but brackets are things you see in space. They are not necessarily the same. They can be in fact completely different. And one thing you can do is to press Alt and Z. This will toggle the brackets you see in space. It will toggle between everything and the ones that are specified in the bracket profile that is configured as part of the overview settings. So when you open the overview settings window, you will see that the overview preset and bracket preset are different. For example, on the more tab, overview preset is more, but bracket preset is more background. This is exactly configured to give the useful items visible in the space and not spamming your overview. For example, you can see planets, but they are not on your overview. This is the main difference between overview presets and bracket presets. There are also other settings visible here, but having imported my overview preset, you can pretty much ignore them since they should be set up in a reasonably good way. There are other overview profiles available that will do things differently, so if you don't like something, go ahead and try one of the other ones you find on the forums. Colors are very important. As you notice here in this local chat, some of these have colors, others do not. This is because I imported my overview preset and anything that existed in local before doesn't have a color. They should actually all have a color. So let's go to the next system and see how it looks in practice with all the colors up to date. These little tags in front of the name. There you see, everyone except me is marked yellow. For me, yellow means watch out, this guy is dangerous, he's a hostile, you should kill him if you can. I'm in high sec, so I can't really kill anyone, but they are bats, they are not to be trusted. I will cover who is a good guy and who is a bad guy in a later segment of this video. For now, just know that this is generally how it should look like if there are bats in the system. Alright, enough pretty ship graphics. I'm going to show you how I generally have my camera set up. What you want to do is zoom out and hit Ctrl and D to turn on the directional overlay. You want to be fairly well zoomed out so you can see everything that goes on around you and have the ranges on the tactical grid displayed so you know how far everything is. This is very useful. You will probably want to keep it something like this all the time. Of course zoom out, zoom in as needed, but this sort of setup works for almost everything. There are some in-game chat channels that are semi-actively used and especially if you cannot get the out-of-game systems functioning correctly, you may try to ask for help in-game. One of these channels is Little Bees, just as you see it in Jabber, the same way this channel exists in-game. You can ask for help in this channel and if you have any questions about getting to our space or how things work, feel free to ask help. Many mentors are in this channel and also other newbies. 
let's take a look at the map and see who exactly we are and who our allies are and where our space is because the first thing you want to do is get to our space the tool you want to use for this is GTS which you installed as part of the first introduction video you can zoom in and zoom out this is a very good map one of the best far superior to the in-game map now our space is here in the top left corner Declan it is generally surrounded by allies Fade is allied territory. Pure blind is semi contested territory. We hold it, but at the moment there are occasionally hostile gangs running around there, and a couple of NPC systems where everyone can dock are hotspots for enemy activity. To the north, we also have friendly territories. Venal has NPC stations. There are some hostiles playing around there, but in general, this is all friendly space. And the same goes for the areas of Tribute and Veil vale of the Silent. These are our Imperium allies, and this is a relatively safe area. Of course, the closer you get to enemy territory, the more danger there will be. In here is high security space, and between high security space and our space lie a couple of low security regions Black Rise, Placid and so forth. In addition to the map visible in GTS, you may also want to take a look at the coalition map available online at one of the URLs in the video description. There are two maps on this URL. The first shows the territory held by each alliance. We are the yellow blob in the top left corner, but perhaps more useful is the coalition map. This shows not only us, but all our coalition allies as well, so you can have a good idea of where friendly territory lies and where everyone else lies. If you are coming the long way from outside the Imperium, you will want to make sure to enter friendly territory as soon as possible, to avoid running into any gate camps. The largest danger is always on the border systems. Getting to our space from wherever you currently reside is fairly annoying if you take the long route. Let's give it a trial run on the map and see how it would look like. So let's assume I am in Arlek, which is one of the systems near where I, my new character spawned, and we want to get to Y80, which is the main Declan hub. How many jumps will it take me? 41. That's a long, long way. You can see the green line coming here through high sec, through pure blind and fade, and finally heading up to Declan. You probably don't want to take this long route, although the current route it gave me is one of the safer ones. There are some gate camps on the way, on the border systems especially. For example, here is a system called EC Tech P8R, which is a border system directly between Nullsec and HiSec. And this gate is very often camped, not only by us, but also by our enemies. So you never know what's going to happen if you try to come in from Torinos into our space. A much easier way to get to our space is simply to death clone. Death cloning involves setting your home station to one of our hubs and then just killing yourself. You will pop up in your home station and will already be in Declan. Note that you can only remotely set your home station once a year. So if you have already used up your once a year death clone, then you will need to do it the long way around and actually make those 40 jumps into Declan. There are essentially two systems where you should consider setting up, at least initially. The first is YAW, YA0. This is our military capital and market hub. The second system is 3T7. This is where Karma Fleet lives and it is the North Declan hub. As you can see, Declan is a fairly large area and is roughly split between south and north areas. Let's dock up in some random station. If you check info of the station, you have the services list visible. What you want to see is Clone Bay. That will allow you to death clone into Declan. 
use the clone bay in a station that offers this service and hit the first button, change station. It may take half a minute for this list to load, so be patient. And you will want to look for the destination in the lower list. Unfortunately, this list does not appear to be sorted by anything meaningful, so you'll have to scroll through it and try to find the right station. Here we go. This is Yao. I'm going to death clone myself to Yao, so I'm just going to click set home station. And yes. Now you see my home station is set and all I need to do to arrive there is to hit self-destruct. And that's it. I am now in friendly territory. Upon arrival, note how almost everyone or indeed everyone in the local chat is now blue or green. These colors indicate that they are friends. There are no hostiles currently in this system. It is very important to be able to identify who is a friend and who is hostile. In general, there are two groups of players. There are blues. This covers everyone who is friendly, even if the color is not blue. Blues is a general term for friends. So, for example, the ones that are blue are definitely blue, but also the ones who are green are blue, and also the ones who are purple are actually blue. Every player except yourself has a color tag using my overview profile. Not every overview profile does this. Some of them have people without color tags. Those will be hostiles as well. The colors used for hostiles are usually red, yellow, orange, and gray. In my overview pack, hostiles are either yellow or orange. There are various terms used to indicate hostiles, such as newts, neutrals, reds, oranges, yellows. These all mean hostile. Some players make a distinction between very hostile and just sort of hostile, but I do not. In general, you will have an easier life if you just consider everyone who is not blue a hostile. Note that in fleets, the FC may always override whatever the game is telling you. The FC may say, this guy is not blue anymore, or it may say that some hostiles are blue. In such situations, you are expected to follow the FC's orders, not what the game is telling you. You also need to be aware that the station guest list often lies. You see, here there is someone who looks hostile, but when we look at the same person in the local window, it's actually blue. The colors in the guest list are often wrong. Never trust the colors here. Never think there's a hostile if you only see him in the guest list. The local list is far more reliable, but not 100% reliable. If you log in, then upon first load, this list may be incorrect. It may show people as hostile, even though they are actually blue. So when you encounter such a situation, right click on the person, show info, and look at the color tag at the corner of the portrait. This is always correct. So in case you log in and immediately see what look like hostiles, be sure to check the show info to verify whether this is actually correct. After you change systems or join a fleet, the local colors will always be accurate. We operate under a policy of not blue, shoot it. If it's not blue, you can consider it a hostile and you should kill him if at all you can. There is only one situation where you do not wish to kill a hostile, and that is when the FC forbids it. As long as you are not under orders by a fleet commander to treat a hostile as blue, you are free to engage in combat. I will now list some points of interest in Declan and various systems you should be familiar with. You can always see your current system in the top left corner, YA0 or YAO. This is the main Declan market hub. Now let's take a look at the map and see where it is and what is next to it. I'm of course speaking of the GTS map. The in-game map is terrible and should not be used for just about anything. You can find your current system by just typing it into the search box. Here we go, this is Yao. This is our central market hub. Not many people do ratting or other PvE activities near Yao because it is a heavily traveled system. Very often, people from Fade and Pure Blind come up through this pipe, through CCP, into the Yao area. So it can be a dangerous place, and new people who have set up their home in this system 
and have started to run anomalies have found themselves falling victim to roaming gangs. As you go north in Declan, there is this pipe that leads out into Venal. This is rarely used, but sometimes there are hostile activities going on in Venal and gangs may come through this pipe into Declan. JU in South Declan is the entrance to the Declan pipeline and it is our home defense central location. Many home defense fleets form in JU and there is a very active presence always in this system and nearby. Going further north, most of these systems are used for ratting and various other industry and PvE activities. Here in ATES you see a connection to Fade. Some gangs will come up through this pipe into Declan, so you should be careful near this connection. Everything left of ATES is considered North Declan. Here in 3D7 is the Karma Fleet Hub, and here is the Pentagram, a very popular area for ratting and other PvE activities. Here in the very northern tip you will find a connection to Branch. This is another possible entrance for roaming gangs, so you should be careful around the tip. To the east of Yao lies East Declan. This is a fairly low population area. People do not often use it. When you are doing your activities in Declan, you should be aware of the various rights different alliances have to different areas of space. Declan belongs to Goon Swarm Federation, but when you perform activities in neighboring areas, you will want to make sure that you have the rights to do so. Most importantly, this pertains to any sort of ratting and PvE activities in space. All space is available for PvP to anyone. You do not need to worry about shooting people in a place you are not allowed to. You are allowed to shoot any hostiles anywhere. To see the ratting rights, go to the wiki. These cover every PvE related activity found in space. Read through these rules. They govern who can mine where, who can rat where, who can explore where. The rights are defined by region. So for example in Declan, Goon Swarm Federation has exclusive rights. The main mistake people make is that they go into one of the neighboring systems and try to rat or explore there, and this is not allowed. For example, you cannot go down into Fade to rat, because this is SMA territory, and Goon Swarm Federation is not allowed to perform PvE activities there. Note that there is one exception. If a ratting site escalates to a new anomaly in neighboring space, you are allowed to complete that escalation there. Read through these rights and make sure that your activities are all according to the rules. There is one important thing missing from GTS by default. There are no jump bridges on this map, yet our alliance makes extensive use of jump bridges, especially in Declan and in all allied territory. All Imperium members are free to use jump bridges in all Imperium space. In order to make them visible in GTS, you need to import them. To do this, go to Data and import jump bridges. Now open the jump bridges page in the wiki. Simply select all text by pressing Ctrl A and copy it by pressing Ctrl C. Now switch back to GTS and push the button. That's it. You have now jump bridges visible. They are the green lines. They are essentially player-made stargates connecting distant systems and can make travel much easier. For example, coming from 3T7 and going into Yao, you can travel into the system of LT Draw and then take a jump bridge, skipping many many systems and landing straight in I30, a few jumps away from Yao. I will now show you how to move safely and comfortably in our space. Let's for example go from Yao to 3T7. Note that there may be hostiles roaming Declan. Our space is fairly safe, but to travel securely you always want to be aware of where the hostiles are. We have a good mechanism for this called Intel Channels. If you open the Intel Channels page in the wiki, you will see the list. You will want to have these channels always open when you are traveling in the covered territory. For example, if I am moving in Declan, I will always want to have the Declan Intel channel open. What I usually do is I have the Intel channels as another box, another window above my normal chats. 
because they must always be visible. You always want to see what is going on. When any hostiles are noticed, other players will report them in the Intel channel. If systems are clear, players may also report that a system is clear. This player just reported that the system of Zoe is clear. This player reported that there is a player called Perda Perda in the system of 3QE. As you can see, people are keeping track of what any hostiles are doing and constantly reporting their activities. This is the purpose of Intel channels, so you can learn who is where and what they are doing. Now, by clicking on the system name and going to root, you can easily see how far away it is from you, and this can help determine whether this information is relevant to you or not. Here's a little example of how you can report Intel. So I've just logged in and I see these hostiles in local. By right clicking and show info I can verify that yes they are hostile, there is no blue tag here. So what I'm going to do is drag the system name, then drag their names, all three of them, and because I am docked and do not know what chips they are using, I'm going to put NV for no visual because I don't know what they're in. And that's how you report Intel. When it comes to the Intel channel, it is important to note that it is only for Intel. There is to be no discussion, no chat, no random shit talk in the Intel channel. You cannot say hello, you cannot say thanks, you cannot say good luck. Just report where you see someone, who it is and what ships they're in. And if it's really tactically relevant, you can also report who is bubbled where and things like that but it's only to give other players information. It's not for chatting. If you want to talk to someone personally, open a private conversation with them. And even more important than not shitting up Intel is that you never report blue Intel. That is, you never report whether there are any blues in any system. This applies not only to the Intel channel, but also to all other methods of communication. Never say on Jabber, hey, there's this blue fleet here, what's it doing? Never say on Mumble, hey, I'm seeing 100 blue ships, cool, this must be nice. No, don't say that. Blues do not exist, especially if they are in large numbers or if they are in big ships. Whoa, look at the Titan. It's a terrible thing to say. Never say that. There are no Titans in this game. Nobody wants to hear about them. If you see them, you are imagining them. Blues do not exist as far as talking about them goes. Now, let's take a look at the map again and see where I need to travel. If I'm coming from Yao into 3T7, I will want to take the jump reach in I-30. So let's first head into I-30. You can most easily accomplish this by setting your destination to I-30. Type in I-30 into the search box and it should find the system. Right click, set destination. Alright, it's three jumps away. I should probably get into a ship, but let's get into this Reaper and let's get going. As you recall, I always have my view zoomed out so I can see what's going on around me. Looks like some other blues are traveling as well. So first, the yellow system indicates where the route goes, so let's take that jump. As you can see, I have now arrived in I-30. This is the system with the jump bridge. But you may notice there is no jump bridge on my overview. This is because they are not celestial objects and to get to a jump bridge, you generally want to use a bookmark. Most corporations have all the jump bridges in the corporation locations, so you can just right click in space and warp to the bookmark. Once you arrive at the bookmark, you should now see the jump bridge on your overview. It works just like a gate. You have to be within 2.5 kilometers of it, and then you can just use the jump option. Note that jumping through jump bridges does give you AIDS, or jump fatigue. To learn more about what that is, read the wiki. The main point is that you cannot use jump bridges too often. As long as you keep your aids low enough that it will not still be there when you log in tomorrow, you will be fine. Alright, now what's the next system to go to? Let's take a look at our trusty GTS again. I took the jump bridge in I-30 and arrived in LT Draw, and this means I can now slow boat the few jumps into 3T7. There is no other jump bridge that takes me any closer and I also cannot jump for another 5 minutes due to space aids. So I will just go directly to 3T7 by gates. Once more, open the root dialog, 
put 3t7 in there and you can set destination and be on your way. And will you look at that? I arrived in 3t7 without encountering any hostiles and everyone in the system is blue. That was a boring trip, but here I am. Now I'm going to dock up and switch into a little bit of a faster ship and show you a different way to navigate when going back. Since this character I'm using has no skills whatsoever, I haven't even started training a single skill, it cannot actually fly an interceptor or any sort of other travel ship, so I will simply take a shuttle. Shuttles are very fast and quite good for moving around in space if you cannot uh, yet fly an interceptor. The best travel ship that I recommend is a taxi interceptor, since you can fit those for insta warp, which means you are almost uncatchable by any way, by anyone, anywhere. Some people also use industrial ships because they have a bonus to jump fatigue, but I don't think it's worth it. You want something that goes fast and the jet. The space age is not that big a deal. As long as you keep this counter below like 5 hours on your last jump, you will be fine. You shouldn't have any fatigue tomorrow. So mine is less than 1 hour, so I can probably do 2, maybe 3 jumps today. If you wait for this timer to tick down entirely, you can sort of reset your counter. The higher this counter is for each jump, the higher it will be the next time. It will rise more if it's already high, so if you do seven or eight jumps one after another you will find yourself with one month of fatigue and will not be able to use jump bridges for an entire month so be careful but it's not that too big a deal right so going back i'm going to navigate using gts in addition to simply being a mapping tool it also can help you navigate here when in the route planner tab i will set the source system as 3T7 and the destination as Yaw. There are various settings you can configure here. If you set the correct ship, then it will calculate a better route for you sometimes because it, different ships move at different speeds and GTS can use this information to determine how you can get to your destination faster. So I'm just going to put, what was it, Minmatar Shuttle. The bridges checkbox allows GTS to use bridges for your route. And this preset is very important. It says how much jump fatigue GTS will allow you to get. I'm just going to go with six hours. That's going to be enough to not worry too much about in a single day and it will also help make fast routes that make use of jump bridges. Once you have configured these settings, you can hit find route. This was unexpected, it planned two jump bridges for me. That is a bit annoying because I actually already have jump fatigue, which I didn't tell GTS about. So I'm going to put here, uh, how much did I have? Maybe one hour? No, less. Whatever. Find route. And here you go. Now it found a more optimal route. The same one I came through. And only one jump, so only one dose of space aids. It gives you this route down here. You can follow this list manually, but you don't have to. You can also follow it automatically. Let's switch back to the game to see how that works. Now open the browser from menu, accessories, browser, and go to http colon slash slash localhost colon 23455. This connects to the running instance of GTS on your computer. And it will open this sort of little page now, when you first open the GTS router page, it may ask you to trust the page or it may just not function properly. In any case, you will need to go to Options and Trusted Sites and add this site to the Trusted Sites list. Put the URL here, add an asterisk to the end and hit the Trust Site button. The same applies to just about every other site that interacts with the game in any way. You need to add it to the trusted sites list or it will not work properly. If you hit import route, it will take the same route that is in the application. And now it will automatically set your destination and tell you what next system to go to is. And it will even use jump bridges, which is something the in-game navigation does not do. Always keep this window open if you are navigating with GGS and just minimize it. It should stay there as long as it stays active in the sidebar, it will automatically set your route. Now let's undock and take the first jump. 
Now, as you notice, as soon as I entered system, it set the next waypoint. It only sets the next system via GTS because the game doesn't allow for the level of configurability that uh, GTS does. So it just guides you one by one through different systems. Let's just keep going. I'm just following instructions from GTS. I don't even remember where it takes me. All I know is it sets the destination and that's where I'm going. Now when you right click in space you will see some corporation locations. What you usually will not see are very safe spots and such because those are personal. However there are bookmark packs available that will give you bookmarks in tactical locations. For example 100 kilometers above and below every gate. So if there is an enemy on the gate you can walk to these bookmarks and travel in a safer manner. Check the SMART forum for these bookmark packs. Now as you notice when I jumped into LT Draw, there is no destination. Well this is GTS's way to let you know that you need to use the jump bridge. So as usual I will walk to the jump bridge bookmark and use it and then continue following GTS instructions. Now there is also another tool available to have a different view of the status of Declan. It is called Standing Fleet. I will show you how it works. Let's open a new tab in the browser. I don't want to shut down GTS routing. And I have in my bookmarks Standing Fleet. The link is in the video description as always. When you open this page it shows you this list of fleets which only has one fleet called the Imperium. If it does not show this then you need to make sure that you add this site to the trusted sites list. You also need to put the asterisk at the end and add it like this. Type it in like this, hit trust site and then it will work normally. Some people have reported they need to restart the EVE for this to work, right? Just click on the Imperium and you will be given access to an Intel map. You will find more information about this map on the forums. Essentially it will gather information from the Intel channel and put it into a visual format. I don't personally use it much, so I don't actually know how it works and what it does. I don't think it's very comfortable, so I don't use it at all. But some people find the visual look is kind of useful. If you like it, use it. If you don't, then who cares? Alright, I have arrived in Yao. Again, I did not see any enemies on the route. Very boring trip. Let's stock up and continue with the tutorial. Once you are safely set up in Declan, you will want to get some free stuff. The first thing you'll want to get is free frigates. Join the chat called GS underscore frigates and follow the instructions in the MOTD. You will type something like what I have in this chat and just press enter and you will be given something. It may take some time to get a ship, especially since the mentors are well, sometimes available, sometimes away, it depends on the time zone. If you don't get an answer in, say, an hour, feel free to request again. Try asking in Jabber. It may elicit more of a response, since there are more people in Jabber than in the in-game chat. In Jabber, you can just ask in little bees. We give out unlimited free frigates. You can always ask for more, and they are completely free. They are very basic ships, uh, but they are good for a lot of starter things. You can just move around in them, or you can go on fleets with them. They are the most basic ship that is useful in fleets. Fleet PvP will be covered in more detail in another video. There are also various threads on the forum in order to get free stuff, which I will now show you. They are mostly in the Little Bees forum, although some are also in other forums, especially be sure to check your corporation forum for that may contain special offers only for your corporation members. So just check for anything that says free. Here you go. This thread will give you free implants. Here you can probably get some free planetary interaction stuff, free exploration frigates, free skill books, and there's a bunch of free stuff available. So just go through all these threads, read them, see what you have to do to apply, and you'll get stuff. Ask for all the free stuff that you can get, even if you have already a pile of ISK. Free stuff is always good to have. And now that you are settled in Declan, you will really want to go in depth into all the forums. Little Bees is specifically for newbies. Player vs Everything has a lot of topics about making ISK, killing rats, home economics. 
is all focused on making ISK with industry and other such activities. And if you are in a corporation other than Gunwaffe, you will also have a corporation forum that only your corporation members can see. And this may contain some special offers for you. This is the end of the second video. Hopefully you are now well on your way to getting properly set up in Declan. The next videos in the series will take a look at doing PvP and PvE activities and introduce the community aspect of life in Goon Swarm Federation. See you in the next video.